Hello. In the previous video, we have introduced the weighted least square solution, and in this video, I would like to apply this to one of our previous examples where we wanted to identify the car model, basically the velocity of the car against the required mechanical energy to drive at a certain steady state speed. For that, we already uh, approached with a polynomial approach of third order. Oh, by the way, here's the three missing. And uh, in contrast to the previous examples where we already identified this model using ordinary least squares, we will assume a little bit different uh, noise conditions, and this is that the variance of our noise nu is equal to a diagonal matrix with entries sigma 1 square to sigma n square. And this will be basically our covariance matrix, capital R, which we have introduced previously. And to make this a little bit more specific, what I assume here is that our variance is basically increasing with the speed so that for a certain measurement of the power over the speed, so that would be some sigma i square at that point, that this will basically increase with the speed. So our sensor is very accurate at low speeds in terms of measuring the power of the car and it becomes noisy and more uncertain at higher speeds. Okay, so that would not be in line with our ordinary least squares approach where we assume the constant uh, noise um, characteristics, but here we have basically an increasing noise over speed. And what have we learned from the last video? Just repeat it very click quickly. So we have learned that the WLS, the weighted least squares, is basically similar to the ordinary least squares but different where W is Z transposed times our weighting matrix Z times Z inverse times Z transposed times W times Y. And as we assume, so this is of course also an assumption that we have access to this covariance matrix of our noise, we can basically set this weighting matrix as R inverse, right? And that basically means that depending on the noise level depicted here by the covariance, we will basically weight data points which are subject to more noise less than those which are subject to little noise levels. Okay, so far so good. Let's see that also in a programming example, uh, a notebook which you can also download as usual from GitHub. So uh, we will basically set up here our uh, normal car model parameters as usual, uh, just a repetition of what we had previously. Then we design some ground truth data at that point, which is um, noiseless so far. And then we set up our regression problem, but here with this uh, model approach, which we also see here, that depending on the speed, the noise basically is here increasing over time, right? And accordingly, our uh, weighting matrix is here, or not our weighting matrix, but our covariance matrix is designed here accordingly. Then, for comparison reasons, um, in this cell, what we basically do is we solve this problem twice. We solve it once, for the normal ordinary least squares where we basically ignore that we have this unusual noise characteristics and then here the last two lines we basically solve it with the weighted least squares approach with this inverse of the noise covariance matrix as the weighting matrix. If we then plot the results for the standard ordinary least squares where we basically ignore as I said this noise spectrum what we can see here from this plot is basically twofold. First of all, we see also, as here in my little sketch, 
that the noise level uh, is a little bit increasing over time. These are those red data points. And that if we apply this ordinary least squares fit to it, that the identified values of the parameters, this one here at the left, they are all significantly deviating from the true ground host parameters. So there is a, a very huge deviation. Although the prediction based on this model, these greenish points here are not so bad, However, we can still that at some points there are uh, visible deviations between the true system without noise and this fitted model in green. So we see that there's also in terms of the prediction, not only in terms of the parameter, but also in terms of the prediction, a certain negative impact of this unusual noise level. Okay. However, we can of course utilize now our uh, weighted least squares solution and compare it against the, weight, uh, the ordinary least squares solution. And what we can see here is that due to the weighting, we have been able to obtain a parameter set. So here the estimated parameter set, which is quite close, not exact, but quite close to the true parameters. And also accordingly, the prediction of the model, which we have here in the greenish points, is significantly or at least visibly better than the ordinary least squares fit. Why do we not meet here the parameters exactly? Now, yeah, quite obviously, in this example, we only have at total 50 data points which are utilized for the model identification. And um, as discussed, we basically have the problem that the data points which are here in the right part where the noise of the sensor is significant, that they get very uncertain. So that means there is less information which we can squeeze out from this data sample. And as we have already discussed during the, um, uh, the property discussion of the least squares fit, this will basically then lead also to a less certain parameter identification result, which we can basically see here also in our numerical example. Last but not least, in this comparison, we can also compare the um, normalized fitting error. So basically what we have calculated here in these uh, two last uh, lines is basically that we have calculated the two norm error of the ordinary least squares fit and the WLS uh, against the noise-free ground truth data. And what we have already seen visually here is also somehow um, confirmed on a numerical level that due to this improved weighting or this opportunity of utilizing weighting in the WLS approach, we have been able to reduce the predicted error by roughly one third. Okay, so that's uh, for it for the weighted least squares approach. It gives us additional degrees of freedom, basically a generalization of the ordinary least squares. And we will uh, basically develop this approach also further in a recursive fashion in the next video regarding recursive least squares. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.